over time, the Linux desktop is shifting more and more towards Wayland. And come GTK 5, for GTK, it may be more than just a shift. So this issue is posted by Matthias Klassen over on the GTK GitLab. Consider dropping the X11 backend, it is not getting any better, and Wayland is widely available. So Matthias Klassen is a GTK maintainer, a Red Hat employee, and has been involved with the project for about 20 or so years. So it's not just some random person making this issue. Now that does sound very extreme, especially with the current state of the Linux desktop where a lot of people still rely on Xorg, especially if they're using an Nvidia card. Nvidia is getting better, but there are still a lot of people out there who just don't want to deal with Nvidia on Wayland. But keep in mind the GTK5 tag. So even if they decide that doing this is a good idea, which nothing has been set in stone yet, X11 support isn't going to be dropped for a very, very long time. So looking back on the history of GTK, GTK2 came out in 2002. GTK3 came out nine years later in 2011, and then GTK4 in 2020. So there's roughly like a nine or so year gap between releases. The gap between GTK1 and GTK2 was a lot shorter, but that's the only time it has ever been that short. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see GTK5 until like maybe 2029 or 2030. Also keep in mind that if you're not using GNOME, you're probably not going to see GTK5 until maybe like 2033, 2035. Like today, I look at lots of software and I can maybe count on like one hand the amount of GTK4 software I've actually seen. Most of the developers out there are still building stuff on GTK3, and it's probably going to stay like that for a long time. Now, I want to make something very clear. It doesn't matter how much you think Wayland is bad, and Xorg is good, and Xorg does everything you need it to do, and you're never going to install Wayland on your system, and any other form of copium that you might be huffing, it doesn't really matter what you think about Wayland. Wayland is the direction that developers are focusing on, and that is where the Linux desktop is going to go. If you've seen my videos before, you've heard my thoughts about the current state of Wayland. I think depending on the compositor you're using, it's a really good experience with gaping holes in the usability. But I think in, you know, eight to 10 years, it is going to be in a really good state and maybe comparable or better than what we are seeing with Xorg. But on this issue, Pierre Osman did make some fairly reasonable complaints. I am biased, but I think we're nowhere near that from an ecosystem point of view. Two major missing pieces. X11 should be gone or marginalized for the vast majority of desktop environments or GTK applications will be GNOME only. Also, virtual detached from hardware sessions for centralized slash remote access need to be possible. I'm not aware of any solution that works with Wayland right now. Regarding that first point, I don't necessarily think it needs to be the vast majority of desktop environments. As we've seen with System D, there's going to be a lot of things out there that just don't use it out of principle. There's going to be some Ds like, say, XFCE, which are still entirely GTK3, not out of principle, but out of the fact that they just don't really have that many developers. In the case of XFCE, they actually have made a roadmap to transition over to Wayland, but it hasn't really had that much of a focus. They're even unsure what to base their compositor on, whether it should be based on something like LibMutter or WL Roots. I think the most important thing is that the vast majority of users are using Wayland. So if we have, you know, a hundred desktop environments, which we probably have more than that, but the vast majority of the users are pulled on like maybe 10 of them, and nine of those desktop environments are all using Wayland, I think at that point, it might be safe to start considering making a change like this. As for the second point here, I don't think he used the search engine, or maybe I'm misunderstanding what he's actually saying, because Gnome has a tool to do this, and Sway has a tool to do this, or anything based on WL Roots has a tool to do this, to my understanding, maybe they don't really hold up as much as the Xorg-based solutions, but the options do exist. This isn't something that I personally care about. I know a lot of users out there don't really care either, but for some people, it is a major stopper. Now, the thing about GTK is while GTK4 does have this X11 backend, 
X11 is by no means the main focus of the project, Wayland is where that primary focus exists. For things like new features, new API endpoints, and things like that. Not to say that X11 is just not being maintained, that's not what I'm saying whatsoever. But Wayland is where stuff is being done first, and then brought over to the other side so things still work, you know, like they should be. And when we're talking specifically about GNOME, to my understanding, if you want to have a completely native Wayland experience and live entirely within the GNOME environment, so, you know, not doing things like third-party screenshotting, gaming, things like that, just using the GNOME environment, it's entirely possible to have a completely native Wayland experience and not use X Wayland whatsoever. And while GTK can certainly start making these plans towards only having a Wayland version, I think what's going to ultimately decide what they have to do is what NVIDIA is doing in 8 to 10 years. Because if everybody on Linux was using AMD and Intel cards, there wouldn't be any problem on the driver front. Now, Wayland compositors have plenty of their own problems, but at least the graphics drivers would be working like you'd expect them to. NVIDIA is fully aware of the problems they need to be addressing, but if they're not dealt with by then, basically they're going to be forced to have an X11 version or just cut out a bunch of NVIDIA users because even today I know people that literally cannot boot into a Wayland session without their graphics card just not doing anything. Now this shift had to happen at some point because over the years since about I think 2011, XORG development has only been slowing as the money has been shifting out of that project. And as of 2019, the project has been in maintenance mode. That doesn't mean that XORG is getting no development. And people do keep sharing that around saying, nobody is maintaining XORG, no work is being done on it. There is being work done on the project, but it is minuscule compared to the amount of work a project like that actually needs. Just as a point of reference to understand the scale of the work, imagine we get to a point where Mozilla has completely abandoned Firefox and most of the maintainers leave as well to go work on whatever other project, Chromium or whatever else they want to work on. But there still may be a handful of people involved in working on the code base. But the code base itself isn't any smaller and there is this massive laundry list of issues that need to be dealt with and there's all of this legacy code that was written ages ago that nobody really has touched in a long time. That's basically what Xorg is right now. Now the Linux side would certainly struggle a bit, but shifting over to Wayland isn't really that difficult. The BSD side though, that's a bit more of a problem. So for free BSD, from my understanding, the Wayland support is actually progressing quite well, and there's even a dedicated free BSD compositor called Hikari. It is also working on Linux as well, so if you want to go and try it out, you can absolutely go and do so. OpenBSD though, from my understanding, it kind of supports KDE, but like not really. And then NetBSD and others basically seem to be in the same boat. So if this GTK shift does happen, it sort of pulls along the rest of Linux desktop with it. It leaves a couple of options available for the BSD guys. One, they can take over maintenance of the legacy Xorg server, but they probably already got enough to maintain by themselves. Taking on a massive project like that is probably going to be pretty difficult. Secondly, fork off of GTK4 and basically hold on to the effectively unmaintained version of Xorg. Or three, try to get the Wayland side actually working well before this actually happens. Otherwise they sort of ri otherwise they risk fading into irrelevance outside of old hardware and server workloads where a graphical environment is not important. Now you might say why would they need to maintain it themselves or why would it only work on old hardware? Well, if GTK does make this switch, that means GNOME is going to make this switch. And we can argue about this all day, but GNOME is the biggest desktop environment on Linux because it's on Ubuntu. And Ubuntu is, without a doubt, the biggest distro available. But there's other big distros that use GNOME as well, like Fedora and things like that. So when GNOME makes this switch, it's going to make a lot of Linux users Wayland only. Everybody who's using GNOME at that point would only be using Wayland. And that means a good majority of people on Linux are going to only be on Wayland. 
and give that enough time with more people shifting over to Wayland, there's going to come a point where graphics card developers don't bother releasing X11 drivers for whatever new cards they release. Obviously, that wouldn't be an immediate thing, like GTK 5 drops, it's Wayland only, GNOME is now Wayland only, and then AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel are like, hey, X11 is dead, no more GPU drivers. This would be something that probably happens, like, maybe 10 or so years after that, especially if, like, QT and Electron also decide that they no longer want to have X11 support as well. But looking that far into the future is entirely speculation, and I have no idea if in 20 years these frameworks are even still going to exist, or if something else is going to come along that basically replaces them. But regarding this X11 support, Emmanuel Bassi had this to say about it. So also a gentle reminder that any Xlib based code base is tied with the current lack of maintenance status of X11. Things are unlikely to improve on that side of the equation, so if you want to ensure that X11 backend in Toolkit still works, go and help X11 project first. Basically what he's saying here is before complaining about GTK potentially dropping X11 support in the future, go and actually make sure X11 is being maintained. Because if it's not being maintained, they don't really have any reason to go and support it. At this stage, the only reason why they are supporting it is because most people are still using X11, or at least a large number of people are using it. But as the gap between Wayland Compositors and XOR grows closer and closer and closer, and eventually, hopefully gets to the point where, you know, Wayland Compositors are actually as good or better to use, there's going to be less of a reason for people to actually want to use it. And when people aren't using it, well, then there's no reason to support it. Once again, I want to make it very clear that nothing is set in stone. The discussion is just opened. So this may happen, this may not happen, but more than likely, I wouldn't be surprised if it does happen, especially considering how far away GTK 5 is still going to be and how much time that still offers to make sure that everything is ready over on the Wayland side. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think the Wayland is going to be ready in 8 to 10 years? Or maybe you're one of the people that think that Wayland is ready right now and you're maining Wayland. Or maybe you think Wayland is never going to be ready and this whole idea of using Wayland is just really dumb and we should just accept that Xorg is where everything just works and not worry about trying to replace it. I would love to know. So if you like this video, go and like the video. If you really like the video and want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to Veropay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.